the drill. So all those matters have to be considered and taken care of so that other work can be done on the machine while drilling is, is, is occurring. And then it becomes a, a more efficient process. Reconnaissance drilling is done to give you uh, a good interpretation of what lies ahead. There are data logging systems to, to log drilling parameters. Uh, also, a good drill operator can tell from the behavior of the drill. He can get some some idea of what's what's happening up ahead of the machine. He can monitor the uh, feed pressure, the rotation pressure of the drill, uh, see the flushing media, monitor the amount of water coming out of the drill hole. The rotational torque, uh, the feed rate of the drill, and get a pretty good idea of what's happening ahead of the drill. I'm going to turn it over to Syndra, who will describe some some cases of, of uh, effective probing and how it's helped on, on different TBM jobs. Yep. Um, just to comment on this one, it's, it's a slide from uh, from a, the Learn Tunnel as well. It's, it's the map geology compared to the geology from from one of these systems. And it, it goes back to what I mentioned before that uh, when probing and drilling, the, your main aim is to to develop a geological model and uh, the input you put in. So it gives you a lot of information out that you, you get out. Um, then I'm going to talk a bit about uh, recent developments that we have on this front. It's, it's one of the things that Robin uh, wants to emphasize a bit on. Uh, one of the things is, is to probe drill while, uh, while the machine is boring. We've done some initial studies that, that did some work on it. Um, if you're interested in it, it shouldn't be too hard to to, uh, to install on a machine. Hopefully, um, we are looking to withhold to, to uh, a probing pattern of, of four holes um, with a certain overlap without any downtime on the machine. Uh, such such solution would also reduce the downtime due to pre dropping uh, dramatically. Um, I won't go into detail on what we've done here, but uh, if someone wants some information about it, we can we can talk about it later. The other one is, is to include um, MVD measurement while drilling systems on uh, on TBMs. This is a very pro proven technology in home blast tunneling. You have uh, uh, loggers on, on all uh, drill hammers. You have they measure uh, different. Parameters, uh, torque, penetration, measure the water. Then you put, you put it into one of these MVD systems, uh, software to analyze it and give it a lot of a model on it. An example of it from uh, Rockma, which is one of the companies that delivered it, is shown from the right. Uh, another example also from the Loren Tunnel is given here where, where it's uh, Illustrated in regards to hardness. Uh, especially, you should pay, pay notice to, to this zone, which you can see on, uh, on the picture on the next slide. But when uh, the tunnel has been blasted, you can see you can find the same, the same geological patterns. This could be a very helpful tool, um, and the technology is already there, so it, it's not very hard to install from TDM. Um, this is a bigger example, or a bigger part of the of the model we just uh, had on the other slide, which gives you the the 
model we, we got from, from the data system compared to the match allergy and diseases. It's pretty good. Um, a lot of product owners in Norway also use this for, uh, for documentation of the geology of the tunnel. Then it's time for another uh, poll question. And while everyone's answering that, Cinder, we have another question. What are some examples of successful TDM projects that have used data recording? Uh, TDM projects or the last project? What's the question? This one's TDM projects. Yeah, I guess you, you rather want to ask uh, Dennis, he's been working on this uh, significantly longer than me. Well, I, I can uh, cite one uh, local in the U.S. with a job in Milwaukee. Uh, it was a 22-foot open main beam TBM. Uh, historically, the tunnels there in limestone have encountered massive amounts of water. Uh, the TBM was fitted with fairly good drilling system. Uh, they didn't drill all the time. They drilled frequently, uh, and it was pretty systematic. Most of the time, they could drill... Uh, they would do a reconnaissance hole, measure the water flow. If the flow exceeded 100 gallons a minute, they would drill four to six holes, grout, and drill check holes. And they said they could routinely do that generally within one shift. So it cost time, but it did save the problem of massive water inflows. Uh, if they decided to take a shortcut and not probe ahead and grout, sometimes they encountered problems. They would have massive inflows when TBM passed. And once, once the water is exposed, it's, it's a lot harder to, to control. They would try to control it with post, post grouting around a machine. But once the water is rushing out, it's, it's, it's very difficult to try to cut off. Uh, it's easier to try to control while it's ahead of the machine. So that's one example of a, of a rock machine. There's uh, uh, others. There's machines operating now. Uh, Arrowhead was a classic example. That was, that was a problem with a lot of water. Also, the project that Dennis uh, mentioned earlier, uh, from also the VF project, where uh, it was a requirement from the project owner to use uh, uh, free ground, in fact, the systematic free ground in front of TBM. That was back in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, it was hugely successful when done, but the uh, development somehow uh, kind of stopped after that. Um, we have a couple of case studies to follow up on that. Um, one of the projects I've been partially involved in is the Vodagana project in India. An interesting case study because it's, uh, it's two, uh, two TBMs, uh, not exactly the same size, but both big TBMs operating, uh, parallel or in an 18 kilometer tunnel. Uh, one of them is from Robbins, the other one is from another, another manufacturer. They started boring, uh, but very limited, um, it's double sheet machine flows, they started boring very limited to lots of information. Uh, both machines, as far as I know, set up with one probe drill, uh, no systematic probe drilling. And after a while, the machine that was in front hit, uh, hit the weakness zone and got, uh, stuck. Um, this case it is basically when the, the other machine, uh, our machine, uh, were approaching the same zone. We knew that approximately the chain it was, uh, was on, so we started uh, substantial probe drilling when approaching it. Um, the, the drill hammer was not equipped with uh, the logging, proper logging equipment. Uh, however, they measured, measured approximate penetration speeds. Um, the water ingress analyzed the muck and came up with sort of a geological model. Um, and then decided how to free grout after that. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's four probe holes. Uh, the lengths were varying a, a lot in what they got out of the results. And depending on these results, 
the grunting and rolling the sides of the side. Uh, the primary uh, umbrella consists of 14 grouting holes. Uh, then it was a secondary one with uh, 9 grouting holes. So as you can see, it's a fairly uh, limited uh, grouting pattern. Uh, when they started boring, it was very time consuming, so they reduced the pattern a bit. Uh, they were boring a 20 to 30 meters full, uh, with a 4 to 6 meters full of that. Uh, the project encountered, uh, the zone has expected. Uh, and due, due to this knowledge, and even with a very limited for a probing and grouting machine, uh, Went to, through the tunnel without, uh, through the stone without any, any major problems. However, uh, after it started boring again, uh, it hit another stone because, uh, which they met unprepared and they had some, you know, experiences there before they got the machine, uh, to go again. However, the, the case that it sort of, uh, illustrates that the problem and the pre grouting can be extremely efficient, even uh, if done at a very limited scale. You can see now that the machine is good and boring again. Uh, but what we should take out of this story is that uh, both the machine's downtimes due uh, to these background conditions should be avoided if if the machines were properly equipped and uh, if they used probing and pre-routing uh, efficiently in all the way instead of just doing it when they knew the geology was bad. This is especially important in, uh, in uh, some projects where the topological pre-investigation is very limited and it's a very good insurance to probe them. I'll throw the ball back to um, the um, you can follow up with some some more uh, case studies. I'll, I'll describe a few machines uh, and the drilling situation. Uh, I'll describe some of the problems with drilling in very hard rock. This is a view at the back end of a 10 meter double shield hard rock TBM. You can see in the tail shield, you can see the, uh, the segments that have been erected. You can see the chub jacks. You can see this rotary positioner that can carry the probe drill around uh, 360 degrees around the machine axis. Uh, there's, this is a good sized machine, so there's a pretty good work platform, which is very, very important for, for efficient drilling. Uh, and you can see the drill entering the guide tube that's built within the shield body. So that's from the rear end. I'm sorry, I forget to talk, turn the pointer on, and I realize I'm not pointing. So I'll try to do better. There's the point. Uh, this this is a view of the the rock, uh, the drill cutting of the rock. This is just forward of the gripper shield and a telescopic shield area. Uh, of course, there's a gap between this is the OD of the shield, and this is the tunnel bore. So there's a gap, of course, because there, there's overcut in the crown. So the cutter. Cutter had cuts into a slightly bigger diameter than the shield diameter. They were able to get to get into this area by opening the clean out hatch in a telescopic shield. The rock was very hard, and this is a fairly shallow collaring angle, about seven degrees. So when they tried to get the drill started, instead of starting in at that acute angle, it would just glance off and just skate over top of the machine on the rock bore. So at the site, they made some, uh, they improvised to try to get try to get the bit into the rock. There's the guy working through the through the hatch, clean out hatch in a telescopic shield. What they did uh, is put a semicircular guide to try to try to guide the, the drill in. Put a steel wedge to force the rock the bit into the rock. They actually created a starting niche for the drill bit by eating the rock with a with a cutting torch, which is a very dangerous and not, not a very good solution. They improvised, uh, they didn't drill so many holes there, so in that very hard rock zone, they did, they did get the drill started. Certainly, we need an improved method. Uh, 
and there are some improvements within the shoe.